Man, what a time to be a comic book media fan right now. Between the new episodes of She-Hulk coming out to a whole lot of controversy, to the much anticipated release of Andor coming out in just a few weeks. And let's not even mention what DC is up to these days. There's so many topics to talk about. And you might be thinking to yourself, Jonah, what could you possibly cover today that's more important than any of those things? And to that, I only say one thing. How about my Funko collection? One second. How about my Funko collection? Crap. I figure today is gonna be a pretty relaxed video for you guys. I'm just gonna go through my Funko Pop collection and just show you guys all the stuff that I've collected over the years. And honestly, that really needs no introduction. So with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, first off, I have Sly Cooper. Now, Sly Cooper is a very popular game, specifically for the PlayStation 2 that came out, oof, I'd say about 15 years ago off the top of my head. Um, I played this all the time when I was a kid. And my best friend and I spent hours on all three of the original games trying to 100% every single one of them. And let me tell you, those were some of my favorite memories as a child. So I had to go get this Sly Cooper Funko Pop for me to have. Although I really can't take credit for picking it up. My wife actually got it for me for my birthday. So uh, that's wife of the year material right there. Moving on, I have the University of Kentucky mascot. If you don't know me, when it comes to college basketball or basically any college sports at all, I am a Kentucky Wildcat till the day I die. Kentucky Blues run through my family's blood for generations, and with me, it's no different. <laughs> I'm coming out with the heavy hitters now. Coming up next, I have Sonic the Hedgehog. It really doesn't take a whole lot of imagination or curiosity to wonder why or how I wanted to have this Funko Pop. It goes without saying, and I've said this on a lot of my videos, I am a huge Sonic the Hedgehog fan. Whether it's the games, the comics, the movies, you name it, I'm down for it. I don't care how old I am. So I bought this on Amazon about two to three years ago. This, I can easily say, is one of my favorite Funkos that I've ever owned. Speaking of Sonic, naturally, it's gotta have a sidekick. I really wanted Tails, no offense to Knuckles. Know how I feel, why would you say that? But Tails right now goes for about 50 to 100 bucks. And until I can come up with that kind of money just to blow, uh, Knuckles is gonna have to do. Maybe it is I. But he's not found the way. But there will always be a spot on my shelf available for whenever I'm able to track down Tails. Really makes this Knuckles kind of seem like the redheaded stepchild of my Funko collection since I keep talking about how I didn't want him, but I swear I really was excited to have this Funko. Moving on to a little more pop culture, I have Michael Gary Scott. If you know me, you know I'm a diehard Office fan. I've watched every single episode multiple times. I could probably recite most of them back from memory. And with all of the different Office Funkos that were out there, it was really hard for me to decide which one I really wanted. And every time I started thinking about it, I kept coming back to Michael Scott, literally the OG. You can't have the office without Michael Scott. Respect, R-E-S-P-C-T. Moving on to DC, I have Heath Ledger's Joker from The Dark Knight. This Funko was one that I was extremely excited to find. I know I say that a lot when it comes to being excited about collecting things, but my thing is if you're not excited about collecting stuff, why are you collecting it to begin with? I try to make sure that all the Funkos that I get are the ones that I'm really hyped about having. That being said, there's really not much else to say about this Joker. Literally one of the most iconic villains in all of cinema history, and it was a no-brainer to pick up this Funko. Keeping inside the DC universe, I have Vigilante from the Peacemaker TV show. This was one that I actually just got two days ago. I was gonna pre-order him when he first came out, but I couldn't really justify the price tag. In terms of money, we have no money. And so I kind of waited for a couple months and then I was in a craft store, ironically, with my wife looking for a puzzle. And I literally just saw this thing just peeking out from the display right by the door. As soon as I saw it, I scooped it up. I absolutely love the character of Vigilante. I thought Vigilante was a huge part of why the Peacemaker TV show was so successful. And his wit and his banter with Peacemaker is one of the best parts of the show. The kind of doing these Funkos out of order just a tad, but at the end of the day, who cares? I'll make these a two for one. I have Drew Brees, and Alvin Kamara from the New Orleans Saints. If you haven't noticed from some of the shots in my studio in a couple of my videos, I am a die-hard Saints fan. I've been a Saints fan for over a decade, and I always wanted to have a Drew Brees Funko Pop specifically. So I special ordered this one, and then I also just so happened to have found Alvin Kamara when I was Funko hunting a couple months ago. To me, there is no Drew Brees without Alvin Kamara at the tail end of Drew Brees' career. If you're not into sports, I apologize, but sports, just like Marvel, DC, and comic book stuff, is a huge part of my life. 
So for me, easily one of my favorite acquisitions. My final sports Funko is Anthony Davis. As a Kentucky fan, I was a huge fan of Anthony Davis when he played at Kentucky. Then when he went to the NBA, I've pretty much followed him everywhere he went when it came to all of his games with the Pelicans and when he got traded to the Lakers. Now, if only Anthony Davis would actually stay healthy in real life and not miss so many games, but that's a story for another day. All right, now we've got Captain America from Avengers Endgame. Kind of ironic, but this was my first ever Funko Pop that I've ever owned. Even though this particular version of Captain America isn't my favorite Funko. To me, it was a no-brainer when it first came out, especially with the hype train rolling for the accumulation of the entire Infinity Saga. So at the time, I thought, why the heck not? I can do this all day. Yeah, I know. Keeping up with the Marvel category, we have Spider-Man from the PS4 game, and Kingpin. This one I was really excited about because I'm a huge fan of the Spider-Man game. And I thought Miles Morales was also an excellent addition in the second game. I'm so excited about Spider-Man 2 that's coming out next year. I like the details of him being unmasked and holding his mask in his hand. And although at first I wasn't a big fan of the white logo on the chest, I actually am starting to warm up to it a lot more over the past year or so. And then also I have Kingpin from the Marvel 80 year anniversary. I was hyped when I found this Funko. This is one of the most expensive that I have in my collection right now. And to me, it looks like you literally ripped him right out of a comic book. This is more so the comic accurate Kingpin, not so much from the Daredevil TV show or from any other live action media. This is Kingpin straight from the comics. I love the personality that it gives him along with his signature walking cane and everything about this just screams unique. To me, that's why this is one of my favorite Funko Pops. Just to breeze by this one real quick, I have Galactus. Now, Galactus was a character that I started to really become a fan of over the last couple years. And I started to read things like Marvel Zombies or other Fantastic Four related comics that had Galactus in it. Galactus is one of the coolest villains out there. I don't know if they're teasing potentially a future with Galactus being the main villain in a potential Marvel movie or maybe phase five or six of the MCU. Galactus was just one of those figures that even though it's not one of the most rarest or coolest Funkos, I just wanted to have just because I straight up think Galactus is dope. That's it. Also, I have Thanos from the Marvel 80 year anniversary. This is from the same series that Kingpin came from. Again, this really focuses more on the comic accurate portrayal of the character. Not necessarily from the movies or from any of the games. This is straight up Thanos from the Infinity Gauntlet storyline in the comics. You gotta love his diabolical and sinister grin. Literally one of the most iconic parts about Thanos. They don't necessarily show the Infinity Gauntlet fully equipped with all of the stones, but you don't need to put them in there to showcase how powerful he really is. I love the contrast between the gold and the blue on his costume. And I know I say this a lot, but this one is just straight up really cool. The last Funko in my Marvel collection is Doctor Strange Supreme. And although I definitely did not like the What If TV show, I thought this episode with Doctor Strange Supreme was the only good part of the whole TV show. I wish they would have explored it in more detail, but when it comes to this specific character, I jumped on the hype train really quickly. I thought he was such a tragic yet compelling and powerful individual. And I feel like we could probably use a little bit more explanation of his power set and his backstory, maybe in the future episodes of What If? I don't know. Marvel, that's on you. Coming up in the last category of my Funko Pop collection, I have Darth Maul and Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think these two in tandem work really well when they're being displayed on the shelf behind me. I think it's gotten to the point with all of the backstory we've now had on Darth Maul that you really can't have Obi-Wan Kenobi without Darth Maul. Their rich backstory with the fact that Obi-Wan was the reason why Maul lost his legs and his pride and his sanity, shoot, now that I think about it. I love the character development that we got from Darth Maul, both in the Clone Wars and some extended comic books. They took what was already a very cool character and transformed him into one of the most compelling characters, not just villains, of the entire Star Wars universe. And then Obi-Wan Kenobi, need I say more? I mean, Obi-Wan Kenobi is literally one of the best Star Wars characters Ever. Now, whether or not he was done justice in the Obi-Wan TV show is a whole nother story. Check out my video if you're really interested in seeing more about that. But when it comes to the character himself, separated from all of the, the crap that he's been through recently, he is to me what a true Jedi is loyal, uncompromising, and always willing to sacrifice himself to do the right thing. Obi-Wan Kenobi is one of my favorite Funkos that I have. So uncivilized. Next up, we have Boba Fett 
Now, unfortunately, this Boba Fett was the one that I got from The Mandalorian. And although I wasn't a big fan of Boba Fett's portrayal in his own TV show, I thought it was a little bit better in Mandalorian season two. And so I could justify holding onto this Funko. But I thought Boba Fett as a character is someone that really did deserve his own backstory, but I think he was done an extreme disservice in his own TV show. It got to the point where it was just humiliating. Like a bantha. But it doesn't take away from the fact that Boba Fett is a dope, dope character. Especially when you get into Star Wars Legends and the extended universe. Oh my gosh, it's hard not to be a fan of Boba Fett. Please fix him, Disney. And now, without further ado, the last two Funkos in my collection. Do it. No one else but Sheev Palpatine, baby. I still can't believe I was able to track down this Funko. Just like how I found a couple of my other Funkos just kind of sitting in the bargain bin, this thing was literally sitting in the same antique store I normally shop at sitting on top of some old lady's dresser, or was it some sort of like old timey vintage box? I don't know, but whatever it was, this thing was just sitting on there. And I'm pretty sure someone set it down either to go to the bathroom or because they lost interest in it. And I'm so glad they did because this represents one of the most essential characters in all of Star Wars. You don't have most of what goes down without Emperor Palpatine pulling all the strings behind the scenes. Literally nothing else to say other than he is an iconic villain in an iconic franchise. And to conclude everything out, I have Luke Skywalker with Grogu. Luke Skywalker is already one of my favorite characters before they ruined him in the sequel trilogy. But to me, seeing him at the end of The Mandalorian Season 2 was so much more to me than just seeing a cameo. This specific adaptation of Luke Skywalker was designed and engineered to elicit a warm feeling and response among the diehard Star Wars fans who had spent years feeling like they were being neglected and left behind by Disney. And his appearance to save The Mandalorian and all of his friends was easily one of the most impactful scenes in all of Star Wars. Say what you want about the shoddy CGI, which I agree is pretty rough. It's more so of the emotions that you feel when you see his lightsaber saber ignite for the first time in so long. It gets me emotional just thinking about it. And I would be lying to you guys if I said I didn't feel those same emotions when I saw him on the screen for the first time in that scene. And it would be a shame for me to not make this one of the centerpieces of my collection. And that's it. That's my Funko collection. Behold. My stuff. Now I'm turning it over to you guys. Do you have a particular Funko that you're really fond of? Or if you don't collect Funkos, are there any other collectibles that you really enjoy? I personally think collectibles are a great way for fans to show their appreciation for the things that they love. And I can't wait to hear what kind of collectibles that you guys have. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new. We'll see you next time.